Hi, everyone. My name is Anka Udoc, and I'm Regional Marketing Manager in XR80. I would like to welcome you at today's webinar, Renewable Energy in Battery Storage with Xenon. Thank you for joining us. Let's see today's speaker. speakers. Sorry. Uh, first, we'll have Dalibor Bobic, Xenon Sales Engineer from XR80 Belgrade. Dejan Sršin, Xenon Sales Engineer from XR80 Slovenia. Uh, today, a special guest speaker will be joining us, Jan Urbanc, who is a technical expert in Gorinske Elektrarne in Slovenia. And this is me on the left. So let's see today's agenda. First, we will hear a little bit about Exority and Copa Data company profiles by Dali Borbobic. After that, monitoring and control of energy generation also by Dali Borbobic. Later on, the answer Sheen uh, will talk about operating battery energy storage systems. And after him, our guest speaker, Jan Urbans, uh, will present a use case uh, control for distributed generation of hydroelectric and solar power. At the end, uh, we will have a Q&A session today with two special guests joining us from Copa Data Company, Stefan Hufnagel and Louis Williams. So please send all of your questions uh, during the webinar into Q&A box or chat box, and we will answer them during the webinar or at the end in the Q&A session. Um, the webinar is being recorded. You will receive the recording to your email address in the following days. And also please uh, fill out the survey that will pop out in your browser uh, once the webinar finishes. Uh, so, Let's start. Uh, first, I would like to wel welcome Dali Borbobic, who will talk about XR80 and Kubernetes company profiles and monitoring and control of energy generation. Welcome, Dali Bor. Thank you, Anka. Just to share my screen. Okay. Warm welcome from my side too to all participants today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, for those who are first time with us, just brief introduction of our company profiles, starting with with Xoreti. So we are uh, representatives and distributors of many different hardware software solutions. As you can see from uh, ten global companies, uh, we are present in a in uh, eight countries uh, and from Slovenia to North Macedonia. Uh, with 15 employees, and we have three offices in Slovenia, Croatia, and, and Serbia. Um, speaking about Copa Data, uh, Copa Data is developing Xenon software platform in Austria uh, since 1987, so more than 35 years now. And uh, what is important is that there are 200,000 installations worldwide already. Uh, Together with Copa Data, of course, we are doing uh, software sales, technical support, and different kind of trainings and, and certifications online and offline uh, in our classrooms, in, in our offices. Uh, just briefly, in general, about Xenon Software Platform, maybe someone uh, already know, but uh, just a few key points. It's a comprehensive software that, as we like to say, make your life, can make your life easier. And uh, uh, just a few key points like scalability uh, that makes uh, uh, available uh, people to, to start with really small projects and upgrade step-by-step -step with different modules, different tag numbers, different options uh, without any limitations. Uh, of course, performance, uh, flexibility, openness, maybe also important interdisciplinary nature, which we will see also today we are covering different areas, different industries in and energy sector and infrastructure. So it is possible to implement it really easily into different areas. OK, uh, let's dive into uh, more technical details of today's webinar. So monitoring and control of energy generation. First of all, why someone should choose Xenon Energy Edition? It's, uh, as I mentioned, comprehensive software that provides you with the, the ability to make a connection between different kind of uh, equipment, different uh, uh, vendors, uh, make upstream, downstream communication, uh, make uh, compatibility between these equipment and scale these projects. Uh, Xenon provides you with awareness, with different trending alarm systems, connectivity states, 
and of course provide you with option to control this uh, systems that you are connected to with for energy addition it's interlocking with command sequencing with topology check and different other options uh, speaking about application profiles regarding Xenon Energy Edition, we are covering renewables, including hydropower plant, uh, substation and distribution. Maybe important here, it's not today's topic, but substation automation is a big part. Uh, and we are proud to say that we have many different substation automation projects, even in our area. So focusing on renewables we, we will speak today about wind power solar pv battery energy storage systems and hydropower i'm really happy to see that uh, jan is here to speak about combination between hydro and solar pv today at the end of our webinar okay let's see what are the challenges uh, uh technology challenges nowadays so how to visualize and control how to interconnect between these different uh, types of projects of applications, uh, how to deploy an engineer, and of course, how to cyber protect everything. Well, Xenon is capable of connecting all these different uh, projects in, in one system and provide you with all data and all uh, options to control, to visualize, to analyze this data. How this is possible? Well, we like to say it's multilingual SCADA. Uh, Xenon can speak more than 300 uh, languages, let's say more than we have more than 300 communication protocols, gateways, drivers, starting with energy protocols, of course, standard ones like 850, like 870, 101, 104, uh, even uh, ICCP or newly developed open charge point protocol OCPP. And on the other hand side, uh, standard and proprietary protocols, which makes you available to connect to different other systems, like in the industry area. Uh, there are, of course, Siemens, Beckhoff, Fallon Bradley, uh, KNX, uh, BACnet, SNMP, CAN module, uh, MQTT, and, the, and a lot of different others. Um, important to say is those are uh, in house. Uh, those drivers and protocols are developed in-house, it's uh, conformant uh, to 62.443, and uh, of course the security, end-to-end -end security with TLS and access control and authentication regarding the communication uh, security. Cybersecurity for this kind of projects, of course, as mentioned, 100% in-house development of the whole uh, system and the protocols and, and Xenon software itself with uh, operating system testing and uh, uh, 62443 uh, certified system with life cycle uh, requirements and uh, Xenon is always working on the latest operating system. There are just regular and standard and uh, uh, product updates. Uh, of course, we are using signed files and setups network encryption, which is standard for Xenon, and different security protocols like TLS encryption uh, and uh, others. Okay, uh, speaking about distributed uh, systems, how to connect it in one system. There is Xenon service grid, and I will briefly mention this today because it's important if uh, there are a lot of different sites where we can uh, when we should communicate to the equipment. So with Xenon Service Grid, it's easy to connect different uh, locations in one system and to get uh, all data to visualize, to make an analysis and to access it through the web engine, for example. On, and on the other hand, uh, through APIs, we can connect to the third party applications such as Grafana and Python. Uh, what are the components? Just briefly, there is a central hub, service hub, where Xenon is connected to, then through service hub, uh, through uh, different nodes, everything is shared and uh, through web engine or through APIs to make it available to third party applications, of, of course, uh, together with identity services or different policies. What are uh, use cases? Just as an example, uh, we can have a control center with Tegras connector and different locations with ingress connectors and uh, make this system available uh, to web engine or report engine, to different data storages, 
uh, identity policy, so it's completely secured uh, a platform and through APIs to the third party applications. Okay, speaking about photovoltaic integration, we can see where we can find photovoltaic uh, systems in, in, uh, in the grid. So no matter if it is in transmission or distribution grid, uh, there are uh, key uh, part of the renewables mix. Uh, it, <laughs> they are naturally volatile, so uh, efficiency, monitoring of efficiency is vital and uh, balancing of the demand supply is really critical. So using energy storage systems are very helpful uh, to, to make this balancing uh, more efficient. Uh, what we can do, we can manage PV units or coal solar parks. Uh, we can manage electrical equipment installed there. Uh, we can connect to different hybrid scenarios so like this and connect to the public grid, which I will mention more detail later. What is also available? Solar PV application set. Copa Data made this application set for our customers as one simple solution that shortened project times, of course, and it's a complete package with all information, components, templates uh, to make this project out of the box. Just a few examples. So this power plant, solar power plant is from Jordan, uh, 57 megawatts. Uh, it's uh, part of uh, Jordan's national uh, electric power company. And important here is to see that they are using uh, different energy protocols for communication, like AFT50, uh, 870, DMP3, ICP, and others. And uh, they're using Xenon logic for precise calculations. And also they're using web uh, clients for remote access uh, and for monitoring. Next one is from Vietnam. It's uh, a little bit similar like previous 50 megawatts uh, connected to 110 kV substation and, and power line. And Xenon is there used like HMI, SCADA and the gateway software for communication. A little bit bigger project in Australia. So this is 110 megawatt AC uh, PV plant. So uh, it's really huge since they are using 440,000 solar panels on 250 hectares. Uh, and they, uh, there are 44 AC inverters and four weather stations connected to the system and it's in service since February uh, 2020. Okay, let's jump into wind power. It's almost the same story as for uh, solar PVs. So you can find wind farms in, also in different areas, in distribution and, and transmission grid, um, or separately like isolated systems. So it's also volatile system requirement, uh, requiring balancing and uh, usage of course of battery energy storage systems are really, really helpful. The same as for photovoltaic, we can uh, monitor wind turbines, wind parks, electrical equipment uh, connected to different uh, other plants and of course uh, monitor connection to the public grid. What are common architecture of this kind of systems? You can see uh, a few wind farms and photovoltaic farms, of course, compensation system with battery storages, but we have, uh, let's say, virtual plant control uh, covering all these areas, uh, speaking in both directions with common protocols uh, we are, I already mentioned. And of course, for example, with 104, we can speak with grid operator uh, providing them with all necessary information and uh, all details. A closer look to the wind farm so we can collect data from the uh, control equipment from the tower itself or, or tower base, which uh, provides us with operational control, pitch control, condition monitoring, operational management, and further. So with uh, different field buses and communicating, uh, providing that information to the monitoring center, of course, with other different standard protocols and with 104, for example, to uh, different utilities that are using this information. Uh, just a few more uh, examples and references this time from our area. This is uh, nearby in Italy. So 42.5 megawatts, uh, they are using, um, they are, 
we have a connection to 30 protection devices, uh, GE pro devices with 850 and Modbus DCP uh, connection. And uh, Xenon is, of course, the central uh, control uh, uh, unit for this for medium voltage area. And uh, connection is also to the distribution grid. And the last one is Wind Park in Croatia, in Crnobrdo. It was done by Lightwind. Uh, it is 10.5 megawatts uh, wind uh, farm using Siemens and Beckhoff uh, controllers and also connectivity with standard energy protocols with high flexibility, of course, and remote access via Xenon uh, web server. Uh, okay, this is all from my side. I hope uh, I open some more topics for today Q&A and for our uh, guest speakers and guest uh, Q&A helpers. Thank you so much, Zalibor. Uh, very interesting. So uh, let's move to our next part. Um, operating battery energy storage systems by Diane Sershin. Welcome, Diane. Thanks, Anka. So again, everybody from my side. So I'll cover this relatively, relatively new topic in the energy industry about battery storage system systems. I'll try to explain the purpose and benefits of battery storage. Then we'll take a look how Xenon software can uh, help you realize your uh, battery storage systems in a, in a simple, efficient and cost-effective way. And then the most fun part, we'll take a look at our latest demo battery storage project and we'll take a look at the dashboard and all other nice visual features. Okay. So first we'll take a look at this general overview and see how battery storage can help us first on the energy generation side. So with, if we have, for example, uh, a battery storage system next to our renewable energy plant, uh, so for example, to a, a solar power plant, we can reduce the need for energy curtailment and reduce the need for grid firming. What does that mean? So if, if we have excess of energy or excess of this, uh, of this source, we cannot uh, simply uh, uh, push uh, the energy in an in a overloaded grid. Uh, we, we can store it in our battery storage systems. And then obviously we cannot uh, uh, supply the energy to the system if there is a intermittency of our uh, uh, solar or wind or, or hydro um, uh, energy source. So basically we can, we can dispatch with battery storage systems on the energy uh, generation side, we can dispatch the energy according to customer demands. And then on the transmission level, we can help ourselves with batteries to, to support and, and, and stabilize the grid. So we can take the load off the grid if it's too much energy in the, uh, in the system, or we can push the frequency onto the grid if there is uh, not enough energy in the, in the system. And uh, one other uh, uh, advantage of having uh, uh, batteries is it can help us in the black start event. So if we have a power outage in an isolated grid, we can use battery uh, uh, batteries to restore uh, the energy in the system. On the distribution level, similarly, we can, we can have a, a, an intermediate uh, um, storage facility. So we can, we can uh, then dispatch energy uh, according to needs plus we can we can have an investment referral. What does that mean? So if we need to increase the the supply of energy to the system, and we cannot uh, uh, simply um, uh, refit uh, or upscale in an easy way our our older grid, we can use uh, uh, batteries on different locations to increase the amount of energy that can be supplied to the end customers. So we can use our battery storage system to to battery storage systems to pre preserve the security of our grids, 
and we can reduce the peak loads if we have. So in the peak times, we can supply the energy to a grid plus additional energy that can be supplied through battery storage systems. On the, on the customer side, of course, we can, this is also more and more common, we can, we can uh, add uh, additional energy to, to our facility to cover peak times and, and uh, um, uh, take the energy at the, um, let's say, financially appropriate times. And we, if we now expand on this idea of this competence and look at our virtual power line, so for example, we have our, an older grid that, can, uh, that is also, also already uh, uh, utilized in a, in a maximum way. We can, for example, have battery supply, uh, battery storage, <coughs> excuse me, storage systems on the supply side and demand side. So we can, for example, charge our batteries on the supply side when there is an excess of energy from a renewable source. And there is a, also a grid congestion, so we cannot send additional excess energy to a grid. We can supply it here. And then on the next step, when the uh, grid capacity becomes available, additional grid cap capacity becomes available again, we can discharge this, uh, this stored energy to the demand side. And on the demand side, of course, if the peak is uh, uh, if the load is lower than energy uh, generation, we can simply uh, transfer uh, energy from the supply side to demand side to battery storage system on the demand side. And then, of course, at peak times, we can simply uh, discharge the energy from the demand side and have a higher amount of available energy when combining maximal extent from energy from the uh, 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 overloaded, fully loaded grid plus additional energy from the demand side uh, battery. So this is basically the, 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 main, the, the main benefits and, and purposes, uh, the main point of the battery storage systems. And now let's take a look how Xenon can help you efficiently uh, create to realize your um, uh, battery storage project. So we have Xenon software, as Dalibor has mentioned uh, quite a lot. We can use it on the local HMI and SCADA level. So to have to use it also as a power plant controller uh, uh, and, and uh, for battery management, then we can use Xenon software part to, to communicate to superordinate systems with upstream communication with all the energy protocols that you have already heard. And we can use it for uh, cloud storage systems with uh, service grid uh, and, and so on. And now let's go to the next slide and look at technology stack for better energy storage. What are the necessary components? So we have uh, battery management systems, field devices, we, of course, need also power conversion systems. And we need some uh, control and visualization tool, so an HMI or a SCADA. We can have seen on this, as you have already heard, on, on this level. There's also a point of common coupling, dispatch center, necessary protocols that are, of course, included. And now we have also need some uh, additional hardware, yes, uh, for a power plant uh, control. And we need a hardware, usually uh, a hardware solution for um, protocol converter. So we can communicate to our, our high level systems. How can you, uh, uh, um, in a simpler way and cost efficient way, re uh, replace these hardware based solutions? If we expand this software solution to PPC and uh, uh, communication upstream uh, need, we can use one IPC with Xenon software platform to, co to cover not only SCADA functionalities necessary for control of our uh, battery storage systems, 
but we can also use our soft PLC, which we call Xenon Logic, to control our power plant. And we can also use our integrated um, um, av available solutions of a uh, Xenon Process Gateway so we can communicate upstream uh, to, to a superordinate system. So when we communicate downstream, we use drivers. When we are communicating from SCADA upstream, we, you, we are using our uh, process gateways. And this can then be done on with Xenon you know, platform for all three necessary battery storage system functionalities. Protocols, if you have already heard, standard energy protocols, which are included with Xenon drivers. And additionally here, uh, protocols that, uh, that are necessary typically in a, in a battery storage systems are uh, control area network, so CAN. If we, uh, we also need to, of course, uh, uh, take care of cooling, heating of, the, of our battery banks. So we need uh, a, a protocol that is used in H HVAC systems, and that is our, uh, in, uh, our Xenon KNX driver that we can use and MQTT drivers if we want to communicate um, through uh, IoT protocols. So similarly, <coughs> as you have uh, heard, uh, seen and heard about um, PV applications that soon uh, our battery storage system application set will be released. And you can, same as uh, in, in uh, that case, use, use it to uh, use your uh, all the templates, uh, smart objects, uh, demo project to to uh, efficiently and, and in, a, in a simple way start re realizing and designing your uh, battery storage system. Uh, and the pricing indication will be included. So this is it. Now we can go and take a look at our demo project. So I hope this is visible. If not, I'll ask my one of my colleagues to, to tell me that uh, I'm not sharing my screen. So these are, this is our dashboard for, uh, uh, for nice uh, situational awareness. And it, it, it is meant as a, as a local HMI and SCADA system and at the battery, um, at the battery level. So this is, this is done with, uh, this simulation is done with uh, Xenon logic. So you now can have an idea of the capabilities, not only for uh, controls, you can use Xenologic also to calculate your KPIs uh, when you have some raw values and send them upstream to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, a higher mess or, or whatever analytical systems. And, and uh, uh, all these functionalities that you see here in terms of design and, and, uh, and uh, simply the design solutions can be re reused uh, freely by all our uh, Xenon partners and our Xenon customers. So as you, most of you are probably already aware, uh, battery storage systems are modular type, de type design. So, so uh, uh, a module is, uh, consists of uh, 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 a stack of cells, Stack of rings it consists consistent uh, consists of a stack of modules and a bank consists of stack of strings or also called racks sometimes. Uh, so this this battery storage system consists of two banks and now see here on the on the general overview screen we can we can see uh, the most important parameters to get uh, nice uh, situational awareness. Uh, also, uh, we can see the uh, minimum and the maximum mm, temperature of um, of each of the modules. Uh, maximum temperature and min minimal temperature of the modules. Here we can see state of charge. Basically, all the necessary parameters that are needed on a real-time visualization can be integrated. We can connect and disconnect our bank. 
we can look at the details, comps, we can see trends. So on, uh, uh, on this widget uh, uh, up here, let's say, uh, we, we see our AC load, so our customer, and we connect are connecting grid load with, uh, we have connected our grid load and battery load to our, to our AC uh, load. So we are supplying energy from both sides at the appropriate time. On the widget down here, we can see um, uh, our trend. So we have a real-time monitoring of our battery. Uh, a green line represents a battery. Uh, uh, storage capacity here is almost full. And then when the, cost, uh, when the load profile rises through the certain limit, then the battery starts discharging. And we see a load profile without um, uh, uh, we, we see a load protocol with additional battery storage system. What does that mean? We can uh, um, so-called, uh, we can cut off the peak, uh, so, so uh, we can uh, reduce the amount of overall uh, necessary, uh, energy necessary from the grid side. So I think it's a, a simple concept and, and uh, a nice solution. Uh, so we can also see a, a, a general overview with each bank, each, uh, each string. We can see also more detailed uh, uh, parameters from all the modules. If modules are have some local, some small uh, BMS that and can share the data to our uh, HMI. A single eye diagram. Um, we can have uh, used uh, automatic line coloring that uh, Dalibor has already mentioned, and, and uh, we can disconnect each string, disable each string, if, if we have to uh, replace uh, the string or any, any sort of this, any, any uh, thing like that. Uh, here we have a, um, our conversion system uh, parameters from here. Trends. Uh, so real-time visualization, uh, we can see parameters of all the all the modules and more. Let's say interesting part is also this uh, temperature, which is uh, something we have to keep an eye on in our battery systems. We can see temperature of each of the modules on our real-time data trend. Uh, the health of our network system uh, is also visible, and many other solutions that can be integrated. Uh, okay, this is it from my side. Uh, I'll start sharing my original screen again. And go to our next guest speaker, Jan Urbans and Anka, please take over. Thank you, Diane. That was very interesting. Thank you for showing us the demo as well. So let's move on to our next part. Um, I'm inviting um, Jan Orbans from Gorinska Elektrarne, who will present a use case, control for distributed generation of hydroelectric and solar power. Welcome, Jan. Okay. Thank you, Anka, for introducing me. Just to start screen sharing. Okay. Uh, Anka, is my screen uh, visible? Yes, we can yes. see it. Great, thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, yes, as I said, uh, or Anka said, I'm representing the company Korinske Elektrarne. We are a part of a, a group called Elektro Gorinska. This is uh, in Slovenia, one of the five distribution network operators. In our portfolio, we have uh, hydropower plants. There are, there are 14 small hydropower plants and 13 of them are connected to our SCADA system. The last one is being revitalized right now and it will be also connected to the SCADA system in autumn this year. Uh, besides hydropower plants, we produce green energy also 
in uh, photovoltaic power plants. Uh, we have uh, around 20 of them, and the number will probably increase uh, till the end of the year. Uh, our annual production of energy is around 56,000 megawatts. Um, and uh, production units, which we have, are spread across uh, Slovenia. I have here pointed out just the bigger one. Um, we can see the one or on the east side of Slovenia, one on the one are on the west side of Slovenia. Um, I am mentioning this to give the uh, to give you um, look into our system that the, our system is not concentrated into one area specifically, but is uh, spread across whole uh, whole whole uh, Slovenia. Um, to monitor all that, we have a regional center, which is uh, uh, situated in the premises uh, of our company, which is in Kran. Um, in the premises, we have, uh, yeah, as I said, regional center. And to introduce you this regional center, I will go forward. Yes. Uh, um, here yeah, is the picture of uh, this uh, system in general. Uh, the system was established in uh, year 2011. Uh, since from the start, we are using Copa Data Xenon program, program um, and, is, uh, and it is used uh, in the, our regional center it is used as a st standalone unit. On the sites, we have uh, uh, also SCADA system, and uh, there we have uh, HMIs uh, also running uh, Xenon SCADA. Um, um, yeah, um, our main server, which is uh, in our regional center, is collecting data from all the power plants um, uh, via different communication drivers. We use Hillshire driver, for example, we use step seven TCP IP center and some others. As well, we use some advanced models such as SMS, SQL export trends and others. Power plant operators can connect to our SCADA system via multiple station units and with limited, limited view also via remote devices such as uh, mobile devices and tablet computers. Uh, if you look further into our project, we can start by showing uh, the main board uh, of our SCADA system. Uh, in generally, our SCADA is divided between hydropower plants and solar power plants. On the picture, you see um, we are representing the most important data for the operators to see. So when the operator uh, logs into the SCADA, he sees how, 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 how uh, much power is uh, some power unit producing right now. Um, for PV uh, power plants, uh, we have just the data on the main screen, we have just the data combined. And additional to additional, we have uh, peak power of our all production, uh, production units on the top. Uh, on the next slide, I will uh, focus focus on one of our hydropower plants. Um, this is a hydropower power plant called High Zvirce. Um, as every hydropower plant, we normally have one screen which represents the main hydropower power plant building. Um, there are also screens where we uh, share 
the DEM information and also intake devices. We also have a screen uh, where there is a list of uh, current events, alarms, and there's also a screen where, there, where, where we can modify some settings. Everything, every screen is specifically designed in accordance to which turbine, which generator is used on the site. Um, in the system, we can see, in every system, we can see aggregation data of uh, power, water level, turbine, and a lot of other uh, information. All those data I have men mentioned are collected in the main server and then are exported to SQL, SQL server to make, uh, um, to make our archive. Uh, um, manipulations, which can be managed through our SCADA system are limited and it can be performed just by educated per uh, personnel. For the monitoring of the system, when the operators are in so-called on-call duty, we use SMS alarming uh, to notify them when something is uh, wrong. Uh, if you move to the PV screen, we have similar example as previously shown for hydropower plant. We can make, uh, we can see the basic parameters of a specific uh, power source. Those parameters are, for instance, uh, production, time of synchronization, what is, uh, and also solar irradiance. Um, for every PV, we collect alarms, histograms, and we also use message control. Um, I will show a little bit of this later on. Um, as you can see on this screen, there are some uh, PVs colored red. That means there is some kind of a problem. And uh, we can, if we go further on to a specific power plant, we see that there is a, some kind of a problem on the uh, string um, there. Actually, on the third string, we see there is like power zero. Uh, the system has acknowledged that and uh, mark this field red. Uh, afterwards, also the system sends uh, an SMS message to an operator that there has been some kind of a problem. Uh, um, this, this system works also if uh, in inverter fails or also if whole power plant, if power plant is somehow disconnected from the grid. Um, and uh, the last thing um, I, can sh uh, I want to show you uh, uh, from the PV sites is that we also make a comparison of a production in our system. Uh, we can uh, also uh, compare, uh, we can also make a list of alarms and we can also make some history of uh, uh, working, uh, uh, yeah, working conditions of a specific uh, power plants we are monitoring. Uh, that would be uh, all from my side. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share our uh, our uh, little bit info about our system and uh, uh, word back to Anka. Thank you, Jan. That was very interesting. Thank you for joining us today. So we have come uh, to the last part of today's webinar Q&A session uh, with special, two special guests from Copa Data Company. Stefan Hufnagel and Louis Williams. You can still send your questions to the Q&A box or the chat box and we will answer them. Uh, now I'm giving my word to Dayan. Uh, he will be leading the Q&A session. Thank you, Dan. Thanks again, Anka. As I see, our guests were already quite busy answering your questions. 
so you can see them in Q and A. But we have also some additional questions that we can attend to. We are we have some questions regarding brands for batteries. We are a software provider, but maybe if some of you, uh, Luis or Stefan, can help our uh, our attendee here with some good speculation. You mean the most popular uh, brands for batteries today? Yeah. What are nowadays the top of brands in the market for batteries and inverters? Okay. Uh, so hello, everybody. Um, as you just uh, said, and um, we are actually typically not so much in, in, in contact in the field with uh, uh, and dealing uh, with the selection of assets uh, and more on the side of the software technology and uh, connectivity. But what we see is, of course, um, it's, it's still a very dynamic market and there's a lot of, of players and vendors moving into that market. And there are, of course, some bigger names. Um, uh, like Tesla, like Samsung SDI, like Ceph batteries, for instance, which uh, where where we see some movement into that market. So <clears throat> that that would be some of the bigger names and some of the bigger brands uh, in in terms of utility scale battery systems, large scale battery systems, and uh, also the. Uh, the auxiliary equipment or the power co uh, conversion systems, but. Um, the closer you you look in the different regions in the in the different countries, um, um, the the more uh, new vendors uh, and and even new producers of uh, battery energy storage equipment you will find. I'm pretty sure. So this is still a very dynamic market, and that's why it's uh, it's especially at the moment interesting to have a, a look on. Uh, specific standards, specific data models, for instance, which we can use in order, um, in order to to be compatible and to be interoperable, despite the fact that the the um, the industry is quite new and the industry is, is still in the in the stage of settling. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Stefan. And we have now also a question regarding uh, um, uh, integrating uh, forecasting. So forecasting algorithms, especially with our renewable energy generation. So we have a question, apart from real data, do you also employ any prediction forecasting algorithms? Uh, so let's uh, try, Luis, if you can join us also and answer this question. Yeah, sure. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so as as far as forecasting algorithms, personally, uh, so, so Xenon itself doesn't uh, host any of the algorithms. What we can um, do is provide um, uh, communication possibilities to pull such forecasting data from uh, APIs which specialize in um, solar forecasting for for example um so we have drivers uh for a generic net driver which allows um you to pull as i mentioned connect to an online api um we recently uh did a project uh, using a solcast api which um uses heavy uh forecasting analytics to to give you a a prediction on what power um, the solar plant is going to produce for the next week, every hour, and then you can then in turn update this um, daily. Um, as far as prediction goes in, in Xenon, uh, we do have a, a, a reporting uh, engine tool, which um, allows you to create then prediction models. So you can create uh, time-based prediction models and also value-based prediction models. And this is based off of uh, uh, historical data. So um, I think we're well covered in the, in the area of uh, prediction and also forecasting um, for solar plants. Uh, so especially the forecasting is extremely useful um, for planning maintenance roles. So so if if the so if the weather is going to be bad tomorrow or the or the API um, uh, communicates that uh, that the solar irradiance tomorrow is going to be uh, uh, reduced due to bad weather or pollen in the air, etc., um, then you can make decisions based off of this in in Xenon to, to put your solar PV plant offline for a, for a certain amount of hours. So yeah, we have, uh, we have some prediction and uh, also possibilities to communicate to forecasting 
dedicated forecasting APIs. Okay. Uh, this answers the question. Yeah, excellent. Thanks. Uh, next question we have from uh, Emil. Uh, do you have experience with uh, uh, GSM, GPRS for locations that do not have an alternative communication connection? So basically, this is uh, also maybe more question how to enable communication and not uh, how, how we can um, uh, use our drivers. So uh, Stefan, can you please uh, also help with this question? Uh, yeah, again, this this is a little bit uh, th this is some some um, a little bit far away from uh, from what we typically do. So if we look on the let's say on the whole value chain, uh, we are providing the software for the connectivity for the HMI uh, for for security and uh, not so much uh, dealing with the part uh, in the project where it's about the establishment, let's say on the physical side. So if you need some kind of kind of mobile communication or if you need some kind of um, a wide area networks, um, uh, wide area networks connection. So this is uh, uh, typically not our part of the business. Typically we have uh, their system integrators out there or EPCs out there uh, which do these jobs and job and we come into play once it's um, uh, once once the, the basic system, let's say the network architecture is re ready to operate. However, um, of course, uh, as you mentioned, the fact that we have plenty of communication protocols, um, some of these are specifically um, meant to be used in, an, in a networking environment where you do not have so much bandwidth or, for example, also where you can have communication interruptions. So let's say that you have a very, very remote area which you want to connect, then you would, for an instance, uh, maybe not use uh, like, like heavyweight protocols like uh, IAC 61850, for instance, or, or protocol like those, but there are other protocols, for instance, uh, DMP3, or IEC 6870, which are, uh, to, to speak of the classical energy protocols, which are specifically designed and meant to be used in environments where there can be situations where you have low bandwidth or where you have a high latency, for instance, or where you have even uh, disconnections, partial disconnections. So this, these protocols will help you uh, to, to have a, a consistent interconnection um, um, even if you have interruptions so that any kind of, of value transfer or, or any kind of, um, let's say, command which you want to issue for a certain asset or for a certain plant is consistently negotiated between, let's say, control center and the facility and itself and is consistently secured and uh, and and um, yeah sent back let's say or confirmed hope this this gives some uh, some some information from our uh, point of view in these applications yeah and, and just to add uh, uh, Zenon has been um, used uh, in various projects where this is the case um, uh, I'm unsure of how much details I can I can give away, but let's say you have uh, remote um, uh, oil pumps located uh, uh, out in the country with uh, with some form of security. Um, again, Xenon has been has been used here to not only uh, send the data as, uh, in a in a light um, uh, application directly next to the to the oil pump but also as the um, data collector for all of the remote uh, stations so um, for for remote locations as, as Stefan says we also have uh, uh, some experience with uh, with projects for this with limited bandwidth yeah okay thanks so we are short on time let's just jump two more questions uh, the benefits of hybrid solutions solar PV substation, and battery storage systems. So when we have a hybrid solution, maybe you can expand a little bit what was already mentioned, uh, Stefan, maybe. Mm. So um, what can really be a, a big benefit is to have one platform, uh, one solution platform where you can solve all of these processes. Um, typically, if you, if you have a larger scale solar plant or a larger utility scale, uh, utility scale battery system, 
uh, then on one hand you need to take care of the core process and already in these plants there is a lot of auxiliary uh, equipment for instance in the battery system uh, you need to do climate control there will be kind of an HVAC system which uh, eventually you want to integrate and on the other hand side to to manage the connection to the grid um, um, most likely there will be kind of a switch yard or a substation uh, in, in order to adapt uh, the energy levels and, and hand over energy to the public grid. And on the other hand side, um, most of the time it's then required to directly connect with the local utility in order um, to, to, yeah, to adapt and balance and receive commands uh, from, from, from the utility. And the thing now is, um, it's it, with with Zenon. It's possible also due to our history in in our very very strong history and experience in critical processes like substations um, of all all different kinds, and uh, because of the possibility to integrate all these these balance of plant equipments and um, yeah energy assets, circuit breakers, and so on, you can solve uh, or you can create create a modular but integrated application. Uh, where you where you uh, have all these matters solved on one system, and the thing is then is is that it gets much simpler because you can you do not have to maintain additional interfaces. You do not have to use two, three, four different system in order to get your uh, facility done. But all that can be solved with one in one engineering flow uh, using an integrated database for. Uh, for variables, for drivers, first of all, the visualization, the access to the application, and finally also the, the let's say, the evacuation, the historical logging of, of data and, and uh, ending up in, let's say, uh, doing some um, historic analytics or some advanced analytics in order to improve certain things in your um, in, in, in your facility. So I think it's, it's quite obvious that having a platform which, uh, which is able to take all this in one system is, is quite the benefit. Excellent. Thanks. And last subject that is never omitted with uh, software. Uh, what measures do you recommend for cybersecurity? Luis, maybe you can have the last word. <laughs> so I, I, I can start and then maybe uh, Stefan can add some additional. So uh, as far as um, uh, measures go uh, from from a Xenon software platform perspective, um, our drivers were available, uh, especially for the energy uh, uh, drivers. Um, we have integrated the likes of TLS and uh, secure authentication when we're talking about uh, DMP3. So uh, we've really taken um, uh, steps in the last years as uh, security has always been a, a topic, but predominantly uh, um, most in the last uh, few years um, to bring our drivers, not only the flexibility of many drivers, but also to ensure that they are um, uh, up to the highest level of uh, security. So with the likes of TLS and SA, and um, also the proprietary Xenon uh, internal network communication now supports uh, uh, TLS. Um, as far as measures go, then the, the typical um, uh, steps are, uh, are still recommended from our sides, the likes of um, uh, firewalls on all of the systems, uh, something ba uh, basic as um, a robust uh, user administration system. Uh, security is not only um, uh, on the wire uh, hacking, it can also be physical security. So that's where um, the user administration uh, package in Xenon comes in. Um, yeah, so maybe Stefan can um, add some words uh, on the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that thanks. Was, that was my view. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Luis. Um, I think uh, talking about security is always a bit a bit difficult because there are so many aspects uh, where you could could have uh, dozens of of uh, dedicated webinars, but in general, I've, I think uh, it's it's necessary to realize that 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 cybersecurity needs a, a general and a holistic approach. So first of all, thinking about the application, thinking about the, the possible attack vectors, trying to find a structure where you see what are the critical components, what are the not so critical components, and then uh, finding, let's say, a modular structure. Uh, uh, to 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 realize uh, all, really the solution and let's say encapsulate and protect the critical 
um, islands or the critical modules even more. Um, and uh, as, as Luis said, uh, restricting specific user accesses and all, all these features then come into play. Uh, and Xenon is, is perfectly shaped to, to apply a maximum of security measures uh, and brings, as Luis uh, already mentioned, a lot of uh, security features already on its own. So it's a diverse variety of security features. But on the other hand, also um, uh, Zenon, Zenon can very nicely interact or, or be integrated in conjunction with uh, other third party uh, systems for cybersecurity, let's say like firewalling or intrusion detection uh, and, and things of that sort. Um, we, we, we deal a lot with cybersecurity where we have an eye on this topic and it's a top priority for us. So if you uh, if you go, want to go in detail for, for this point, uh, don't hesitate. Just uh, contact us, email us, uh, so we, we can definitely have a more detailed discussion on, on, the, on, on security topics, on how to secure your industrial application. Excellent. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Louis. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, that's it from the Q&A session. Now the last word is Ankas as it was at the beginning. Thank you so much, everyone. So we have come to the end of today's webinar. If you will have any more questions, please contact us to the email addresses uh, you can see on the screen, and we will be uh, happy to help you with anything. Um, please don't forget to fill out the survey that will pop out in your browser once the webinar will finish and the recording of the webinar will be sent to you in the following days. Uh, we will also post it uh, in, uh, in our uh, YouTube channel, so you can also check it out there. Um, thank you again um, to all the attendees for joining us today and special thanks to all of our guest speakers. It was a pleasure and everyone have a nice day.